the mo and he's not smiling, is he? Well, Sandy, that's racing. <laughs> that's racing. But in uh, quite one of the more sensational aspects of the turf, uh, stewards yesterday questioned Jim Cassidy, trainer Jack Denham, and also at Kembla Grange, another jockey, Troy Phillips. Now, uh, the questions were asked about Jim's use of the whip on Falante and the Chipping Norton Stakes at Warwick Farm yesterday. Jim, just exactly what did you do with the whip? Well, my whip was caught in the main at one stage, Max, and, um, you know, as we know, there, there has been an adjourned inquiry into it. Um, but I, I don't believe I've done anything out of, uh, out of ordinary that I haven't done before. Um, but obviously, uh, they're looking into it. But, um, you know, I, I was satisfied with what I'd done, and uh, I, I don't believe that I've done anything wrong uh, into the rules of racing. Should we have a look at the race now, Sandy? Well, I think first up, we should have a look at uh, the Chipping Norton. Then we'll discuss it with Keith Hillier, who is uh, in our Melbourne studios. They're inside the 600 metres mark and Magic of Sydney is the leader over Future King and On Air. Encounters had a perfect run, one off on the outside, followed by Falante, who's about to whip up three deep, followed by Moss Downs and last of the seven into Gaze as they turn the corner. Into the straight, Magic of Sydney first for home over Future King. Encounters about to loom up on the outside. On his outside is Falante, who's under heavy pressure. Encounter going like a winner at the 150 mark as a length or more to Falante. Into Gaze wide out getting home well but Encounter's going to win under hands and heels riding. Encounter by... Oh! He eased near the line. On air has come again on the inside and damn near got him. Yes, under normal circumstances, Shane Dye easing on Encounter would have been uh, rather controversial. Uh, Dye was uh, warned about dropping his hands before the post. Uh, Dye said that Encounter had spotted something near the post that pricked his ears and he was getting him to the line the best way he could. But Jim... The point in question, can you just show us with your hands exactly what you were doing with Falante? Well, it was once I straightened up, Max, I went, uh, you know, he, he's a stallion, I'm urging him to get him to the line the best way I can. Um, and it was once I straightened up, my whip was caught in the mane and I, I pulled it out and then I've ridden up like this, which obviously um, they think there's something wrong with it. Um, but uh, as I say, I, I don't believe that I'd done anything uh, to be breaking the rules of racing and uh, I certainly had no intention in, uh, of doing anything like that anyway. Jim, it's uh, Keith Hillier here, Hello, remember Keith. me? Uh, <laughs> You're looking well, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. We hadn't forgotten about you, Keith. <laughs> That's good, Max. I thought you were just purposely forgetting about me. Ma uh, Jimmy, yesterday's inquiry, and I know it's, uh, it's ongoing, so there probably are limitations for you, but obviously there, uh, it was an inquiry that started before yesterday's race with some of the evidence that came out about uh, Troy Phillips and, and other people being interviewed? No, that I wouldn't be 100% sure of, Keith. I, I understand that when the inquiry, the inquiry was adjourned during the day, that uh, Chief Steward Ray Murray, he had contacted Kembla stewards uh, wishing to talk to Troy Phillips, and uh, what that outcome is, I, I'm not sure. OK, Max, um, Shane Dye said after the race yesterday that uh, he was never worried on encounter, and those of us who backed him weren't either. Um, do, you, do you think uh, that he risks throwing that race away? No, I, I think uh, for one of the few occasions, I do think that Shane Dye was quite right. He was the master of the situation. Uh, he is a difficult horse encounter, we know. He, he pointed out how the horse had pricked his ears, approaching the winning post. He said, this is a danger sign. I better get him to the line. Don't want to do too much with this horse now. And he just had to follow his instincts. He got there. To my eye, he was never going to be beaten. Max, let's now have a look at uh, the general and the new market. Out on the grandstand now, and Rock You, the leader, to Singing the Blues, hard ridden to be second. Miss Jugara is third, followed by Jugalator and Catlin opening just behind the leading horses on the grandstand side. On the other side, General Nadim about a neck in front of Natoir. A length and a half Toledo, Scandinavia's under the whip to go forward. They reach the 300 metres, and General Nadim slipped about a length and a half in front of Natoir, gone. Scandinavia running on. Catlin openings burst to the front of the grandstand. It's the General in front on the flat side, though, in front of Toledo and Scandinavia. Scandinavia, General Nadim, that's the real one. Won it by a neck from Toledo and no Scandinavia. Well, Greg Miles chose the right phrase there. That's the real General Nadim. What happened in the Oakley Plate, we'll never know. There was a, a 600 metre section of the Oakley Plate that he carved out in 31.1 seconds. But yesterday, in an amazingly slow first half to uh, Australia's most famous sprint race, the new market, the first uh, 600 metres in 36, the General had a soft easy run. He was able to hang on here. And the one out in the middle of the track, Catlin opening, had nothing to cut himself into the race. I thought it was an eye-catching performance from the top weight. Jim, the Caulfield track, 
as far as General Nadim was concerned in the Oakley Plate. Now, you've had a bit of experience on it. Uh, similar sections, well, not quite as fast, but Shavog last week in the Blue Diamond. Do you think the Caulfield track has played a role or will play a role in reversals that are going to come from horses that have raced in Caulfield? They're going to surfaces like uh, Flemington and later Rose Hill and Randwick? I think so, Max. Um, you know, the inside, uh, we talk a lot about track bias, but the inside at Caulfield last week, it, it did clearly show later in the day as the day progressed that horses coming three and four wide were getting home over the top of horses on the fence. And uh, when you look at, uh, say, the general and, and back to Shavhog, when horses are running that time early, they can't burn the wick at both ends. And uh, I think it clearly showed yesterday in the new market when the general's uh, first 600 metres of the race was a lot slower than his, uh, than his last 600. Burn the wick at both ends, of course. Your <laughs> your uh, your riding might and power in the Australian Cup tomorrow. He burned a bit of wick at Caulfield last start. Uh, uh, how do you think? Will he be a better horse uh, in the Australian Cup tomorrow? I think so, Max. He's uh, it's his third run back. He's he's been set for the Australian Cup, and uh, you know his run at Caulfield was a lot better than it looked. Uh, only second up, uh, and remember, he did take three or four runs to come good last time in. But uh, the Australian Cup's his race, and uh, he's going to be very well. Uh, very, very hard to beat. Good yeah. luck on him tomorrow, Jim. Can lay the odds on, Keith? Uh, look, I think he'll win, Max, uh, and I think uh, Volante will, uh, might uh, win the, uh, the other, the Cadbury Guineas as well tomorrow. Big, for the first time in Victoria, we've got two races of a million dollars, so it's going to be a very special race day. We saw Rose of Dane Hill yesterday upset the, uh, the two uh, star Philly Champagne and Kensington Palace, who Lee Friedman said this morning about Kensington Palace, that she's going to contest the AJC Derby, so that's that's going to be a, a terrific uh, race for her. I think we've done pretty well today, Keith. We've got through the entire show and we haven't used that dirty J word. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Catch you next week. Keith, yeah, good to talk to you. Keith Hilly down in Melbourne.